Hey guys, what's up? This week we'll be skipping the wine reviews and my attempts at some financial success. Since we're quickly coming up on the one year mark of lockdowns, I just wanted to check up on you guys and see how you're doing. How have you been coping? Where were you at when you started getting the rumors about lockdowns coming up? I still remember it like yesterday so I wanted to share here what it was like and just trying to relive the memories and the emotions of that day. So let's go check it out. So it was March 12, 2020 on a Thursday and people often like using the phrase that the day started just like any other. Well for me, it was immediately an odd day to begin with. When I woke up, I got news from my NBA fantasy group that one of the players, Rudy Gobert, was sidelined with COVID shortly after that the basketball season was going to be indefinitely postponed. So early in that morning also we found out that Tom Hanks was COVID positive. So, so yeah, it, it felt like the sky was falling. So on that fateful day of March 12, I was supposed to be having brunch with Janessa at Bungalow in Alabang. But unfortunately, we had a bit of a fight the night before. I ended up canceling and she ended up going there with her sister so we weren't exactly on good talking terms that day and since I pretty much freed up my entire day I ended up agreeing to accompany my parents to Batanga City to work on some errands before 11 a.m. we started heading into Batanga City from Paranaque and I posted this IG story basically me being happy seeing the open road felt like summer was right around the corner and happy vibes but I knew at this time that there was a bit of an ominous feeling as well getting to Batanga City we had a quick lunch in one of the Bulalohans I remember there was already a bit of a COVID scare and it, it was a bit of a tight restaurant so a little bit uncomfortable but we were really hungry so after lunch we went into Batanga City City Hall this was when we started getting messages on Viber groups rumors that that the lockdown might be happening at any moment while we were there running our errands at the City Hall it was on our minds that we had to get out of there as soon as possible. We really didn't know what was going to happen. We thought we might get stuck without being able to get back to Metro Manila. Yeah, we didn't know what a lockdown, what a quarantine would have been. After 3 p.m. rushing back to Metro Manila, lots and lots of news were coming in. And after a mad rush, instead of going home directly, we went to the neighborhood convenience store slash meat shop. So basically grabbed anything that we could find because there were just little supply left. That was a little unnerving also. People were right beside each other and I think at that point people were just like, fuck it. Um, we didn't know the terms of the lockdown. What could we do once it's in effect? We went home with a lot of worry that night and I guess everyone was just on standby waiting for the announcement. Uh, which came later on that night. The lockdown was going to be starting March 15 Sunday for one month. So basically it was Thursday. We still had Friday and Saturday to do everything. I thought about meeting up with Janessa or going to her house but since we weren't really on great talking terms that day thinking about the health and safety concern I decided to put off meeting with Janessa so I was thinking yeah it's just gonna be a month we are away for that much time anyway when I'm coming back and forth into Palawan then so the one month wasn't going to be any difficult at least in theory something that we're accustomed to anyway so fast forward to Sunday March 15 I'm sharing here with you my post so we celebrated mass at home, calling it a dystopia. And I had one of my former colleagues commenting it was a bit of an exaggeration. I think fast forward now, it is what it is. I mean, it's not like a super Hunger Games dystopia, but it's definitely not something that we're used to. And if you see in this post also, I randomly called it new normal. I didn't know that was the term that we were going to be officially using. One of the things also I put in my IG story was this bald man uh, turning red, sweating bullets. And with the caption, when you're unemployed and relying on occupancy to sustain your living. So it was very frightening times for me. I guess what's funny to me then was that I was really scared to be losing a month's worth of income. I knew this was definitely going to hit my business pretty hard even if it was just one month or so I thought. In many ways, it was a welcome break because in my Airbnbs, like I was always on call. Janessa knows this and my friends know that I'm not reporting to any office, but I have to attend to guest inquiries and guest concerns practically 24 seven. I couldn't really afford to not have any mobile signal. Um, when the lockdown happened, that was one of the 
welcome things that that I experienced. I finally got a breather from having to reply to all these customer inquiries, complaints, concerns. So it was a welcome change during that one month, supposedly one month. It was a confusing time. It was a refreshing time. I don't know if it's just me, but the memories from that March, April, and a bit of May when the lockdowns got extended were, were really all clear to me. I mean, August, September to December pretty much flew by. I mean, yes, we could go out, but we still don't go out that much. So it's just weird that for March and April, we were just really counting down the days and little did we know that we weren't gonna get out that easily. It's funny when I reflect about it that I was so concerned about losing a few weeks worth of business and then that's when I realized that I was practically losing the entire business. <laughs> uh, if my previous self knew where I'd be at right now, I wouldn't know how to break my former self the news on the loss of income that I'd be going into. So in the past 12 months, my business is just operating at about 5 to 7% of what it used to be. So at a loss of about 93 to 95% of it. So I've practically lost much of it. And like with many of you, this has been hard for me. I know a lot of you have had to deal with loss. Sometimes it's loss of a job. Sometimes it's loss of your business. Maybe it's a loss of sense of pride and fulfillment. And of course, there are those who have been directly affected by COVID with the loss of a loved one. But even then, I feel like last year and its continued effects now does have its charms. This whole time for us has been a time of blessings. We've lost a lot. I don't mean any disrespect for those who have really lost a lot. I mean, I mean I've just shared with you that I've lost 95% of my business. And recently, I also did lose a good friend to COVID. But in any way, just with anything that life throws us, I feel like all of this has been a blessing. Just the time that we've been able to get for ourselves and our families. I have friends who have been with their kids daily at this time that they can never really get back in a good way. And for myself, spending the quality time with my parents at their advanced age, you know, having all this time with them, I think that's really special. And no matter how much this pandemic has taken away from us, I feel like we've really gained a lot of things as well. We've had the chance to reinvent ourselves. For those of you who have watched a few of my videos in the past, I mean this whole cooking thing and getting into more investments and actually just being comfortable in front of the camera. Honestly, just to document and journal all of this has been an interesting experience. I mean, I've gained so much time to learn about myself to really assess what I want to do and what I should do. Pretty much losing most of my business, I still haven't figured it out. For sure, there are opportunities here and there. A lot of budding entrepreneurs actually found their groove, found something to do. Unfortunately, I haven't found that myself. I've dabbled into a few things, but I haven't really found something that I really like and can be good at. So even if I'm scared that I'm depleting my savings, I really do trust that it's gonna work out. And if you're watching this, I hope you do have that feeling as well. Even if we're at a time that we're really lost, and perhaps you're feeling really disadvantaged. I hope you do have a lot of faith and trust that it's gonna be working out. I just know I have to keep trying, keep doing different things, keep experimenting, and I know my dividends might not come today, maybe not tomorrow, maybe not next month, but I know it will come soon enough. And I hope that this is something you can also believe in for yourself. As with Janessa, so it wasn't just a one month separation. Both of us having to live with senior parents, so we've been really careful, especially at the start. That one mistake that I did meet up with her at Bungalow Cafe snowballed into actually 91 days that I did see her. So it was sometime in June that I finally did get to see her. I guess that's one of the lessons also. As cheesy and generic as it may sound, um, every day really counts. We really have to make the most of that. I mean, that day in the 12th of March that we would have had probably that last date at least for that time. It's also a particularly special time in our years-long relationship. Ironically, this time during the pandemic has been one of the smoothest for us. This time gave us the chance to mature and figure things out and understand the personalities that we have. This time has also been productive for us of getting into a new business that we didn't foresee before. I was happy to nudge her to the right direction. Not as an investor, of course, just an advisor. Um, so yeah, if you're interested in her business, I'll share 
the link down below. Just going back, it was funny when the Jollibee Valentine's ads came out. The one about LDR, long distance relationships, or actually lockdown relationships was something I could <laughs> really relate with. And yeah, I think what resonated with me and more so with Janessa was, was the Jollibee commercial about depending on oneself and finding oneself to be able to give to the world when you can be more whole. I think Jollibee ads hit home pretty hard, huh? <laughs> I say this whole time has been a blessing, it's been amazing, and again, I don't mean to be insensitive to everyone who suffered great losses at this time. I feel like it's a time that's been given to us that hasn't been given to anyone in generations past. If you're like me and you're figuring it out, figuring your next steps, your next moves, don't lose heart. And I hope that you can also share your story with me, share in the comments below. How did you react about the lockdowns when they were first announced? But more importantly also, how have you coped? How have you put one foot in front of the other even in these difficult times? And I honestly really do want to hear from you guys. So that's about it. This is my lockdown story. There's more. Obviously, if you wanted to know more, just let me know what specifics. If you've liked this video, please don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe if you haven't already. Again, I hope you've, you've found something in this. But thanks again, and I'll see you again next time.